Okay, what I've got here are four different items. I have a steel item, a brass item, a granite, a piece of granite, and a piece of aluminum. And the aluminum is one inch in diameter. The steel is one inch in diameter. And the brass is three quarter, it's a little smaller. I didn't have any one inch diameter brass. But on the bottom of the, the uh, granite, you can see I've ground it around to where it's a one inch diameter, uh, like a pedestal that it rests on. So these three are the same. This one's a little uh, smaller in diameter. But what I want to show you, let me set these back here out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to turn this little scale on. It's a household scale. Turn it on and it'll set to zero. And this will show grams. And we'll measure the steel or weigh it. And I've smoothed all these on the bottom. They're all the same. They're pretty slick on the bottom. Very smooth. I've sanded them with 220 grit emery cloth. So that one weighs 128 grams. The steel weighs 128. The brass weighs 128. Same. The aluminum weighs 128, the same, all three of the metals are the same, and the uh, uh, granite also weighs 128. And what I want to also show you is, this is steel, there's a neodymium magnet, it sticks to it, see I can hold it up there, and as you know, it won't stick to the brass or the aluminum but to prove this is granite the magnet will stick to it but that little magnet i probably can't hold the granite up but the, the magnet sticks to the granite granite has magnetic properties as well as electrical so that's part of what this is about so i'm showing you what i have all four of these pieces weigh exactly the same 128 grams next we're going to show some vibratory uh, properties of these materials and we'll do that okay this is just like a, a studio monitor speaker and I went in and unhooked the crossover so the tweeter up here doesn't work the woofer has been wired straight in so it's full range from whatever sound source you put into this speaker box is full range to this 8 inch woofer it's an 8 inch pretty pretty good woofer can you see the airport holes there's one there and one here but anyway this is what we're going to use to create the vibrations to vibrate these materials and I'm going to show you next how we're going to do that okay what I have here is like a, an old Maxwell house coffee can and had the cardboard sides kind of a tin bottom and it's only waterproof because of the aluminum you know lining they put in it but this works good because it's fairly smooth on the bottom and it's flat so i'm going to place this on the speaker where it's fairly centered fairly flat okay we're going to leave this can empty that i showed you just a moment ago nothing in there it's real dry but i want to show you what these items do uh with it dry so what we'll do start with the steel the steel one, one inch, 128 grams. And I set it there because it does tend to vibrate towards the center of the, of center of the uh, can. So we'll try that one. And it moves towards the center. And it's hard to push it in any direction. Even when it's there, it don't want to go. It, it moves on its own but I can't force it any faster than it wants to go. And we'll do the brass. I'll set it over here on the far side. It does it from any edge. They'll move towards the center, but I can't push them. They'll move towards the center no matter what, but I can't force them to go any faster than they want to. They want to tip, okay? And we'll do the aluminum. And it moves towards 
register here, but I can't really push it. As you see. And we'll try the granite. Here we go. I can push it a lot easier. It's not the, the surface of them. They're all about the same slickness. The granite may be a little slicker. It's not the actual finished surface I'm using. I'm using a more rough surface here. So it does the same thing. It moves towards the center, but I can move the granite. See how that doesn't really want to tip? It will push. But the rest of them don't want to push around when they're vibrating with this dry. Now I'll add some water and see what that does. Okay, now I'm gonna add the water and we'll put about, like I showed before, a quarter inch of water in there. It's not much. It's not very much water. Now we'll try the steel. I'll put it in here. And if you see, it vibrates, and I still can't push it, but it doesn't go to the center. It don't go to the center like it did when it was dry. It's got more pressure around it. There's not much buoyancy there because it's just a quarter inch of water. So it goes where the water goes, pushes it to the outside. Put it in the center, it almost stops the vibration. Put it on the side, the water really vibrates but it moves to the side. Clean this off. And now we'll try the brass. And I've got this fairly level. I mean, it's fairly level. I can't get it perfect, but it's very close to being level. And the brass kind of does the same thing. It wants to move to the outside when you put water in it but it makes different. And it may be because it's three quarter diameter and taller to get 128 grams, but I can't push them. They want to tip. They don't want to flow, even with the direction it's apparently going. I just can't make it go any faster than what it does on its own. Now we'll try the aluminum. And like I said, it's a quarter inch of water, not much buoyancy, maybe a little uh, lubrication. And since that was so tall to get 128 grams out of the same diameter, one inch, one inch, and one inch, one inch steel, one inch granite, three quarter inch uh, brass, but it warbles. I put it in the center, they all seem to stop it, so, you know. But my point being, now watch what happens when we use the granite with the one-inch surface there, if you can see that. It's a one-inch surface actually touching with the same weight, 128 grams. Oops. Let me stand it up. If you notice, the sound's even different, and it moves by itself real quick. Look at that. And I can, other than right in the center, if I put it over here, I can move it real easy. It doesn't want to tip. It moves. And by the way, this is 120 hertz. I can change the hertz, but the granite reacts differently to the same hertz that the other ones do. No matter what hertz I play, the granite moves more freely. It just moves. And like I said, the, the smooth sides of them is all the same. I can put the real smooth side down and it does basically the same thing. It just moves around so easy. The granite does. 
But maybe, let's put the steel on its side. It rolls good, but it doesn't slide very well. It still won't slide. So the granite really makes a difference. The granite has vibration, vibrational, vibrational, vibrational properties that steel, brass, and aluminum do not. The brass, the aluminum, and the steel do not have the same response at 120 hertz or even any hertz. And I can change the hertz to, let's go to 70. I'm gonna put the steel back. 70 hertz instead of 120. And it just really throws it for a loop. The, the, the granite just moves around. There's just a little quarter inch amount of water in there. The granite just really takes off and moves. Remember, they're all the same weight. 128 grams. Put the steel in there. I still can't move it, see? Not near like I can, the, the granite just flies. Like I said, this is 70 hertz. I'll run it again, put the brass. And the brass just falls over when I push it. And it moves from the vibration. And the aluminum is basically the same way. The aluminum doesn't want to move much either. But when I put the granite in there, it just takes off. Same weight, the granite has them properties with vibration and magnet, magnetic properties like I showed you with the magnet and electrical properties. This thing has three more properties than aluminum, uh, steel, or brass. It's just, it's just something about the crystalline alignment of the uh, content of granite that just makes it special. Run it one more time. That's at 70 hertz. And the reason I keep the water so low, it's not buoyant. They're not floating. It just gives them a little bit of, you know, lubrication, I guess. But the same lubrication with all three, all four of them, the granite just really goes. It just takes off and goes. I can just touch it, move it. It just goes as where at any hurt, any hurts I put to it, the granite moves, the steel doesn't, see? I mean, it'll move a little bit when I push it, but the granite really goes. It just takes off and flies spin, fly, whatever. And it doesn't really matter what surface you put it on, how big the surface is, it just goes. It has vibrational properties, I'm telling you. Okay, I've showed you this on granite. This is a piece of granite, but it's, it's magnetic. The magnet does stick to it. Doesn't want to come off, see? We know it's kind of magnetic, and I showed you the vibrational properties of it. But what I want to do now is show you the electromagnetic properties of it. Not so much electrical, but electromagnetic, which may be close to the same. I'm still working on the electrical part. This will be electrical electromagnetic. What I have here is a microwave transformer. Got my primary coil down here. And I've made my secondary coil. I use this for a lot of experiments. This is the wire. It's like an old number 14 gauge stranded, stranded wire. And that's what my secondary is wound with. But I have one winding, just eight windings around the post, goes to this outlet, which gives me 7.5 AC volts. Then I wound it around again, which gives me 16 windings, which gives me 15.5 volts on this outlet. Then I wound it back up again for the third winding, which is 
uh, 24, and that gives me 23 volts. But we're going to use the 23 volts. What I wanted to show here is I've got this sitting on some foam. If I touch this, you'll see this water. There's water in this little container here. And if I hit the table, you can see ripples in the water. Or if I touch this, you might see it. But I want to show you is when this is running, if you hear it run, there's no vibration in the water other than me touching the table. So the, the running of the transformer is not vibrating anything to make anything happen. That's what I wanted to show. And next, I'll move on to showing you a little bit about the electromagnetic properties of granite. And we'll do that. Okay, here's my transformer, my outlets. This is just a piece of plastic here. It's slick. It's just something to set it on so you can see. What I have here is a piece of granite, just like this one. A little smaller, a little different size. You know, just broken half. And it's just like this other piece. The magnet sticks to it. So it sticks to this one. And it's hard to do without a flat surface. It will stick to it. If you see that, it sticks. So the magnet sticks to this piece of granite. And my magnet, like all my magnets, the reds are north and the blues are south. So that's how that's set up. Around this piece of granite, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windings. Well, almost eight. And it's that same wire I showed you, that number 14 gauge stranded. I think it's 14. I'm not sure what the, the number is, but it's just stranded wire. It's pretty decent wire. It's the same wire I wound this with, and I wound this. What I'm going to do is plug this directly into, and I was wrong on the voltage. This high voltage is 23.5 volts AC now. So that means it's going AC back and forth through this, you know. Uh, 60 times a second, it goes one way than the other because it's AC, alternating current. What I want to show you is I'll put a magnet here, and it does stick to it. It'll pull to it without no current. But if I move back here and energize the transformer, I come in a little closer, it'll pull it to it. And my wires get hot pretty quick. But it's turning the granite into an electromagnet. And I'll do it again. I can even put the north over there because this is alternating current, so either north or south will work. So it pulls it right over there to it. So this does have electromagnetic properties and I'm working on showing the electrical properties of it but this is just electromagnetic so what I want to show now you saw how the granite pulled the magnet over oh and I want to show you this real quick I just have a regular piece of steel here it won't stick to that but it sticks to the magnet if you see so it's a piece of steel I'm going to put it near the, the uh, granite and energize the transformer and it doesn't move the steel. And it won't even stick to it. Not even the, the wire itself with the electromagnetic field. So it pulls the magnet over because the magnet has magnetic properties, which if you understand my theory, you'll understand why. And the, the same thing that's happening with the coil going around the, the granite has got electromagnetic properties, which is why these attract. You have to look at my theory to see that. But the, the granite works as a core to draw the magnet to it way out here. Even though it's, it's magnetic without the uh, current going through it, it pulls in even more so from a farther distance with an electromagnetic field inducing an electromagnetic field in it. Now what I want to show you, we'll take the granite and set it to the side. And now, I'll take a piece of steel. It's just a steel bar, little half-inch steel bar. You see the magnet sticks to it. It's steel. And I'm going to plug it in to that same 23.5 voltage. First, what I'll do is I'll put the magnet here. I have to set it farther away because steel is more uh, magnetically attractive than the granite. Even though the granite is, the steel is more so. And I'll turn on the juice to this. 
and you see it pulled it together from a farther distance than the granite did. And we expect that because steel is higher, has a higher magnetic property. But remember, the steel wouldn't go, this little piece of steel wouldn't attract to the granite. But watch what it does with the steel. And if I get it just close enough, it will pull it in. It will move it. Especially if I do it this way and get a little closer. The steel will pull the steel to it, but the granite would not pull the steel to it. But the steel works with the magnet real well, and the granite works with the magnet fairly well. So it shows the granite does have electromagnetic properties. And I'm using AC here on both of these. It's going back and forth, you know, one way through it, then back, and the other way, then back. And even so it does that, it's still, uh, since it's going back and forth, it'll pull to either a pole or the magnet on either one of them. So next I'm going to set up some DC experiments and show you what it does with DC instead of AC. The same setup. And we'll do this. Okay, I've got the granite here with its windings on it and my steel bar here. What I want to show you now is what this is. It's a, a bridge rectifier and it's just on a heat sink. This is just to draw the heat away from the, the unit itself, the rectifier. What it does, when the AC, when I plug it in here, and the AC comes in, instead of it going back and forth, this only lets that whichever one's pushing comes out here, whichever one's pulling comes in here. So it turns it from AC to DC, like a battery or direct current, which most of you probably know what that is. So what we're going to do now is hook the granite up and the steel bar up to DC instead of AC. And this will be 20.8 volts. The, other, the AC was 23.5, but once I rectify it, it'll drop it down to 20.8. But it's pretty close, and we're going to do that now. Okay, so now I've got the rectifier over here setting in. It's plugged in to the AC, 23.5 volts coming into the rectifier. And on the other side of the rectifier coming out DC is 20.8 volts. So what I want to show you here is the way this is wound coming out of the DC now, instead of going back and forth, it's only going through the wire one way because it's DC. So I'm showing, if you've seen my theory, uh, the blue coming in is the south and the red coming out is the north. That's what an electromagnetic field is, just like a magnet. The magnet's fed one way, going through it, overshoots on the north side and is bent back around. This does basically the same thing, comes in the south, comes out the north. So I'm gonna put north to north and it should repel, right? These should push away from each other. And I'm using the granite now as my core for this electromagnetic field. North to north, it pushes away. Now if I put south to north, which is opposite poles, it's going to attract and pulls it right in. But you notice how quickly I did it on uh, DC here. It just pulled it right in from a good distance. And it will repel it. And if I leave it on long enough, it'll just spin the magnet and pull the magnet in on the south side. So I move it just a little closer. Watch, it'll spin the magnet, pull it in. It spins it around. I hope you saw that. It'll spin it around and get it oriented where they come together, opposite poles. So I hope you saw that. So now what we'll do is unplug the... Uh, granite and I'm going to put the steel in here and plug it in DC and these wires are crazy looking but it's the same thing okay now I've got the steel plugged in and I've got the current going through it in one direction DC now this way so it's south over here to north coming out towards the magnet if you notice if I put the magnet north to north 
it pushes it away and spins it. And if I leave it south, it'll pull to it and I have a hard time pulling it apart. But if I put the north there and it spins it. And if I put the south over here, it'll pull it straight in. Real hard. So the steel, you know, we know that the steel makes an, a real good electromagnetic field. But I want to show that uh, granite does the same thing. The steel does it a little more, uh, you know, extravagantly. North to north, red to red, it pushes. South to north or red to blue, south to north opposite, it pulls. My point was, Granite does the same thing, just not as, as extreme, but it will conduct an electromagnetic field.